My name is uh, Dr. Emily Ferries. I'm a professor here at the Indigenous Studies Department at the University of Sudbury, Laurentian University. And uh, uh, the name of our program is uh, the Department of Indigenous Studies, uh, or like the Indigenous Studies Program. Uh, it uh, is a university program, so we have... Uh, various age groups, anybody who's uh, like say about 17 or 18 just out of high school or uh, uh, people who've returned to school in their later years, so they're the mature students. So there's a variety of ages. Indigenous education for me, from uh, my uh, uh, personal view, <laughs> Is indigenous studies is uh, uh, teaching the truth of what happened to our people, who we are, uh, you know, where we come from, uh, being able to teach the truth about who we are. And I think that uh, at this time in our in our journey, uh, the university is the only place where that can really be done, mm -hmm. and uh, that. Uh, it provides the opportunity for people to learn about their people, their culture, their identity, the true history of what happened to Indigenous people. And I think that uh, over the past few decades, uh, by offering Indigenous studies, uh, we've become a big part of uh, the empowerment of the people, as well as their healing in understanding what really happened with our people. We gain a better understanding of uh, uh, the conditions that we live in and some of the, you know, challenges that we face today because a lot of them have historic roots. To me, what is, uh, you know, a measurement of success is what uh, our students learn here, the no new knowledge that they acquire, what they leave here with mm -hmm. is success because with... Uh, uh, the knowledge that they gain from uh, our uh, program, our uh, studies, our courses, uh, they're able to take with them and they're able to use that knowledge. I believe knowledge is power and they're able to use that uh, power they have because they have knowledge to create awareness uh, amongst the other people, whoever they meet on uh, you know, uh, the truth of what happened to our people and the truth of who we are, you know, our culture, our identity, because there are, because there are so many stereotypes uh, about our people, it's really important that we can uh, combat that, you know, ch problem yes. by uh, creating awareness on um, the truth, mm -hmm. and that's what we do here. Um, I believe that we're still in transition at this time. Uh, when you think about uh, how, what had happened historically in the pre-contact era, our people were sovereign people, they were self-sufficient, and they had total jurisdiction over their education. And, uh, and with European contact, uh, we uh, lost control in every way and in education to the point where we lost our children mm -hmm. physically removed from our uh, uh, from our communities yes. and we also lost the control of what our children learned uh, all education systems that uh, were uh, basically enforced upon our people are all foreign imposed those are not our education systems the residential school wasn't ours the provincial school system is not ours. The federal school system is not ours. It was always foreign and post after European contact. And I think that we are now at a state stage where uh, we're beginning to restore that education jurisdiction. And, uh, and at the university level, it's a really important part of, uh, uh, because the university basically was the main uh, uh, institution that created the opportunity to teach the truth about Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still feel that we're transitioning, we're, we're on a journey, yes. and that our ultimate goal in education at all levels, you know, like the preschool, elementary, secondary, and post-secondary, is that... Uh, 
that our ultimate goal is that we have our own uh, places of learning under our jurisdiction. Like here at the university, uh, I'm happy to be part of, uh, uh, you know, being in a position to be able to teach about our people. And, and But this is still not our house. This is not our house of learning. We're, and, I, and I can, uh, you know... Um, uh, imagine what our 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 own house of learning will look like, and um, and it's going to be very different, eh? Because it's going to be based on our indigenous um, culture, our own way of doing things, uh, our on our own worldviews and that kind of thing. But at this time, uh, we're in somebody else's house, somebody else's institution. We have to follow certain rules, uh, regulations that are not compatible. Uh, to the way that we do things in our in our own teaching, and uh, uh, and it's it's really important to uh, be aware of that because uh, this is not all there is, and this is not all there is going to be. We're going to have our own places of learning, as maybe you know, I we won't live to see it, but future generations will move towards that goal that vision, you know, that uh, we will have our own places of learning. And, and, and our own places of learning will be all-encompassing eh, of our indigenous knowledge, our, our culture, language, and also what we need to know, the skills and knowledge that we need to know to survive in, in, in like, outside our own world mm -hmm. so that we're able to be mobile, that we can fr have the freedom to... Uh, uh, you know, gain access to education in other uh, uh, education systems. But for now, we're in a transition. And when we look at it historically, like we've come a long way. The first thing that we need to do is create awareness among our people. So we're all on this journey together. So that it's not just a few going ahead in the boat and leaving everybody else behind. Uh, the way we can uh, achieve that vision is to uh, journey together, like our, our community members, people who live in urban centers, that so, so that they have the awareness of what this really means, eh? what's mm -hmm. the significance of, uh, of uh, education jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Like, what what does it mean to us in this journey at this time in our history? Mm -hmm. It's very, very important because it's, when you understand that, it's very uh, empowering, you know, to say, hey, I'm like, I'm part of this, you know, and I feel really good. And, uh, and I think it's so, so important that our young people are on board as well. Because if they feel like a part of uh, a journey with others, then they'll have uh, a different outlook on life uh, they'll have a different outlook on themselves you know they'll feel their identity they'll feel uh, 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 belonging to a group and uh, and from there as individuals they'll start setting their own goals in education like to finish high school and then moving on even mapping out where they want to go uh, and I think that we need to provide more opportunities for our youth to do that. And it starts at home, eh? And, mm -hmm. and therefore, because it starts at home, we also need to um, uh, educate and create awareness with parents. Mm -hmm. Because um, by no fault of their own, uh, many of our parents don't have uh, uh, the parenting skills that are needed to... Uh, you know, raise children in today's world, and it, and it, and it's an intergenerational impact from uh, residential schools because their parents were not raised in a nor you know a normal indigenous environment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they were raised in institutions, raised by people like you know that were not even made to be parents, and it can go back like four or five generations back where. Uh, uh, family members have been in residential schools and uh, uh, so it impacts parents today. So I always say like you know it's uh, not really the fault of those parents who don't have those skills. They never had the opportunity to learn and their parents didn't have the opportunity and I really believe that's what they mean by intergenerational impacts because it's like a, 
you know, a ripple, eh? like goes from one end to the next, is passed on to the next. And I think that part of our healing is uh, taking care of uh, the caregivers, eh? the parents who are the main caregivers.